Hello all of you lovely people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and I hope you're having a great day so far because I'm going to try and make it even better. How I hear you ask? Well, because I'm going to try and put a spring in your step and tell you about movies that might actually be awesome despite the buzz they have around them at the moment. Because today we're going to be taking a long and strong look at some red warning flags and then ignore them as we board the hype train and speed off into the sunset. I mean, sure we might find that the track is missing or damaged further down the line, but you know what, we just want to feel the rush and excitement for now, right? Because I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 upcoming movies that have already been saved from sucking. Number 10. Space Jam 2 The idea of Space Jam 2 has been floating around for over two decades, and in that time numerous different ideas for the movie have been put forward. At one point, the name Spy Jam was suggested and Jackie Chan was eyed to star in it, and after that, Skate Jam featuring none other than Tony Hawk. Yeah, well, let's hope that it was going to be better to view than Tony Hawk's ride was to play. I mean, God, I still have nightmares. In short, every and any idea was chucked at this project, but we shouldn't feel so worried as it now looks to have finally found its feet. Space Jam 2 is now officially in production, with a summer 2021 release date set. Even better, it's a basketball-centered affair, funny that, right? And it's going to be starring LeBron James, aka a proper sequel. Even better still, the script has been given a full rewrite by Ryan Coogler, who's worked on Fruitvale Station, Creed and Black Panther. With these simple, some would say obvious choices made, there's much less to worry about than there has been for nearly nearly 20 years, so that's nothing but good news. Number 9. Mortal Kombat So we all know that Mortal Kombat has been turned into movies before, and the results weren't so great, and by that I mean they were absolutely cheesy and I love them. However, in 2010, Kevin Tencharowen, a director who'd made an unofficial Mortal Kombat short film, entered the picture. The short had won a ton of praise and so many were keen to see what he could do. However, it was a bit shaky to say the least as an 8 minute flick versus a 2 hour feature film is like taking on Goro after you'd suffered a babality, a pretty impossible challenge, and things got even worse when he left the project in 2015. However, be not worried, dear friends, as James Wan is now at the helm, the man who helped craft the Conjuring films, Saw, Insidious and Furious 7. Basically, he knows how to do banter and that's exactly what this franchise deserves. If they can work in some cheesy horror and a car chase, then honestly, I'm all for it. Plus, he was behind Aquaman as well, which proves that he can do over-the-top action fights, so don't worry so much and GET OVER HERE! Number 8. X-Men and Fantastic Four Right, so while it might be easy to bag on Fox right now because of the stinker that was Dark Phoenix, we have to remember that they have done an excellent job with some of their X-Men films. Therefore, even though Marvel has taken up the reins, there's actually even more doubt than ever as to what's going to happen to the X-Gang and to a similar extent, the Fantastic Four, which... Well, yes, Fox did absolutely butcher, but let's calm down and look at Marvel's pedigree. Marvel Studios has produced over 20 MCU movies with not a single bad egg in their catalogue except for Thor The Dark World. Ooh, did someone leave this in a fridge at work or something and forget about it because it's terrible? Anyway, they've also got experience with reinventing popular characters like Spider-Man and the Hulk, delivering the best cinematic versions of both of these heroes in the process. And that is exactly the type of treatment that the X-Men and the Fantastic Four need, and given how effortlessly Marvel Studios make it look, there's absolutely no reason to assume that their take on these heroes will be anything less than a huge success. Number 7. Masters of the Universe the upcoming reboot of Masters of the Universe has cycled through several different iterations, one of which even had the director of the Charlie's Angels films ugh, and was going to be penned by Hitman Agent 47's Michael Finch. Ugh. But thankfully, that version has been thrown out of the window in its entirety, and some fresh blood has been brought into the fold. The film will now be directed by the Knee Brothers, known for their superb little indie film, Band of Robbers. As for the script, it's being written by experienced duo Art Markham and Matt Holloway, who penned the first Iron Man film, and more recently, Men in Black International. Now, true, the latter of those two films was, uh, was utterly terrible, but if you're to believe the behind-the-scenes reports, the original script that Markham and Holloway provided was absolutely brilliant. It was just tampered to all hell. So fingers crossed, with some actual pedigree above that of Charlie's Angels, we might get a fairly decent film out of this. Number 6. Uncharted 
An Uncharted movie has been a priority for Sony since the series' early days on the PS3, but they haven't been able to make it work because basically nobody has a clue how to get this to screen. A lot of the people who have been brought on in the past have suggested some truly awful ideas. Some even called for it to be like national treasure. Oh, honey, stop. No, no one wants that. It seemed to be that the ideas were being generated by people who didn't really understand the source material, which is a huge factor when creating a video game movie. Luckily, we now have some positive movement with this project. In January 2019, Dan Trachtenberg signed on to direct the film fresh off the success of the brilliant 10 Cloverfield Lane. Trachtenberg is a proper video game and Uncharted fan, having directed the recent CGI trailer for Warframe as well as a short film set in the Portal universe. Both of these projects prove that he understands how to translate the feel and the essence of a game into something more cinematic. Plus, Tom Holland is a serious upgrade from Mark Wahlberg, who was on the cards for many, many years. While a film about young Drake might not be what most fans want, this is probably the best possible version of that idea that we could possibly hope for. Number 5. Suicide Squad 2 While never really in any danger of cancellation due to the sheer amount of money the first film made, Suicide Squad 2 is like a misfiring motor. It just races ahead and then stutters out time and time again. David Iyer was originally going to return to direct before being replaced by Gavin O'Connor until he fell off the wagon as well. Scripts have been served up like hot dinners and all of them seem to have made a meal out of the subject material. And for a while, it seemed like nobody had an exciting enough vision to convince Warner Brothers to move forward. However, now we have James Gunn on writing and directing duties, which is a major get for the DCEU. Suicide Squad was basically riding Guardians' coattails after all, so let's not, let's not beat around the bush here because it was. It definitely had the offbeat tone in it, so it makes perfect sense and actually gets us excited that Gunn is at the helm. Plus, we have to admit it as well, Gunn has a lot of weight behind him and might put up a lot stiffer resistance to the studio than was found when making Suicide Squad 1 and hopefully that means much less tampering. Number 4. Dune The concept of a Dune film has been passed around more than your mother at a swingers party, both in terms of length and also in how disgusting some of the ideas presented have been, and yes, that is my one per list. I don't want to ever think about that night ever again. However, in the last few years, Dune's prospects have started to look up in a big, big way. For starters, the project has landed one of today's finest living filmmakers in the director of the Blade Runner 2049 film, Arrival and Enemy. There is no reason to doubt that Dennis, and neither are his casting choices. Timothy Chalamet, Javier Bardem, Rebecca Ferguson, Jason Momoa, Josh Brolin, this is almost a perfect storm of casting choices. And with a steady hand on the rudder, this film is almost sure to sail the sand dunes in style. Plus, it's likely to look breathtaking as well. Number 3. Saw 9 Jigsaw is one of the worst films in the Saw franchise, and yet it did so phenomenally well at the box office, there's almost no surprise that we now have Saw 9 in the works. It is hard to get excited about the project, though, seeing as it's written by the same people who just cringed their way through Jigsaw, and yet there is a flicker, and I'll tell you why. Yes, those Jigsaw writers are still on board, but they're now working off a story from Chris Rock, which has been touted as a reinvigoration of the brand. Chris Rock doing Saw isn't something anyone expected or asked for, but Comedians Doing Horror has churned out some great results lately, with Jordan Peele's Get Out and Us and Danny McBride's Halloween in 2018. So at the very least, Saw 9 could be the most refreshing installment to the series to date. Number 2. The Invisible Man a few years ago, Universal unveiled their Dark Universe, a cinematic universe centered around classic monsters like The Mummy and Dr. Jekyll. A Johnny Depp starring Invisible Man movie was apparently also in the works, but that idea was dropped when Tom Cruise's The Mummy, well, absolutely bloody sucked and destroyed the whole thing. However, even with the universe in tatters, it's not stopped Universal from now focusing on crafting new and individual tales instead. To that end, they recently hired Lee Whannell to write and direct a reboot of The Invisible Man, which is going to be backed by Blumhouse Productions. Whannell has had great success working on the Saw and Insidious franchises, so it's clear that he can handle creepy material. And he's just coming off the back of Upgrade, a fantastic little thriller with a neat blend of grungy and futuristic vibes. An Invisible Man movie that incorporates elements of that style would be a fantastic way to update the character for modern audiences, while also remaining faithful to the horror roots and keeping the whole thing grounded. Bloody hell, sign me up. And number one, Barbie. I 
don't know how to put this lightly, but a Barbie movie starring Amy Schumer sounds like my worst nightmare ever. Yet that was the original plan for the project. It also doesn't help that, besides Trainwreck, Schumer's film output has been rather weak, a worrying sign when you're about to become the face of a potential new franchise. However, this has thankfully been dropped, and now in her place is Margot Robbie in the title role. Robbie is an Oscar-caliber actress and no stranger to fronting blockbusters, so this is about as perfect as the casting for this role is going to get. And things got even better last month with the announcement that Lady Bird director Greta Gerwig and the Life Aquatic writer Noah Baumbach have signed on to direct and pen the script respectively. Gerwig earned an Academy Award nomination for her sharp and funny Ladybird screenplay, while Baumbach has been working the business since the mid-1990s, working on successful comedies, dramas, and even stop-motion animations. Therefore, the Barbie film, in a really odd way, might be one of the most interesting, funny, and well-acted pieces to head up all of these future releases. Bizarre. And there we go, those were 10 upcoming films that have already been saved from sucking. I hope that you enjoyed this positively spun piece, my friends. But before you go and get on with your day, which I hope that you absolutely smash, let's take something from the title and apply it to ourselves. Because you know what? You can actually already stop moments from sucking if you take a step back and analyze them. People always plow ahead with just the idea that loads of loads of energy will solve all their problems. And I can tell you from experience that sometimes this isn't the case. You might find that situations call for a lot of energy and become draining and you feel like you're treading water and that can wear you down and burn you out. So sometimes it is better to take a step back and analyze the situation, find out what you can control and what you can't. And if you need help, please ask for it, because trust me, no one wants to see you fail. As always, I've been Jules. You can follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.